listening to that. So you're listening to the power of now, which you're loving. Yeah, and I also that kind of led me to Wayne Dyer. Have yeah, I love him. him. Uh huh. He's a doctor. Yep. So I've uh, I subscribe to him and I post his I posts all the time on Facebook because oh, they're cool. so right in line with. I don't what my look experience, at your face, which I should. It's not all that awesome. It's not all that awesome. <laughs> I know. Okay, never mind. I don't have a whole lot of time right now. You know, when I have time, I'm really active in it. And I do a lot of posting, a lot of creating my own thoughts. But right now, it's like I'm gonna let someone else create those thoughts because I just, you know. So yeah, I post a lot of what he says because it resonates with how I feel and what I like to say. And so to me, it's like I'll just give him the props, but. Yeah. It's we're all kind of coming to this in its uh, state of consciousness is what it is. It's yeah. like we're pulling up up higher information and we're all capable of getting that and and um Yeah, I really like uh, it. I listened to one of his lectures on CD. Yeah. What was it? Change your thoughts, change your mind, something like that. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing when when you come in and talk to me, you should be hearing like, okay, this is all coordinating it is okay and it's like I had my own experience and I came to the same conclusion and he had to have an experience and came to their conclusion and Eckhart Tolle had the same like death experience emotionally and he came to the same yes. conclusion death experience exactly mm -hmm. and you he really died just need to die came back and it's and then he came back so wonderfully new you got it and this is part of like you know, when yeah. you look at the 12-step program of AA, they kind of talk about the desperation. You have to be so desperate that mm -hmm. you're you're willing to feel the, you know, indescribable, it's unpredictable, it's very disorienting uh, sense of self because if you literally emotionally start over, what is what is relative now because right now you're using relative based on past based on parents what they taught you based on the religion that you were forced to memorize based on cultural memorization and when you start over all of a sudden you cannot use those as your relative points of value mm -hmm. you have to start from a new set which you have to be the creator of mm -hmm. if you don't be th if you're not the creator of that then you're not you're still in the same position which is dependency on something outside of you to define your value true and i have gotten pretty low especially in some of our sessions here not really deep to the core of things but, but i don't know if i've really had a death i don't think i've been there yet well that's the part where you know when you look at addiction Mm -hmm. Any addiction. Have you come to realize that addiction ultimately is all the same thing? It's not mm -hmm. the drug of choice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the porn. It's not the, you know, food. It's not the shopping. It's not the alcohol. Granted, certain addictions affect us physically different, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I hit my bottom with alcohol quite severely, and and I could really see it. You know, yeah, as it's occurring it. and the uh, dependency on it and... Mm -hmm. And we judge it too, so that makes it more obvious. Mm -hmm. Whereas food addiction, we we actually want people to excessively eat in our culture. How mm -hmm. many times do you go with a group of friends, and if you were on a diet, your friends were ticked off as if you, as if you were taking away their fun? Mm -hmm. ever, or have you done that to someone else? Because mm -hmm. group binging. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with alcoholics. If you get a group of alcoholics together and one alcoholic decides not to eat, all of them get angry. Mm -hmm. Like my mom, you know, if I don't eat her food, she will feel offended. I mean, she will be nice if I tell her I'm on a diet, you know. She oh, will sure, be. but she still but feels like... I know like that she feels like... She will, she will feel happier if I eat her food. Absolutely. I know that, that crazy? in the end. So, based on that... Are you surprised that you have similar dependencies? Because she's reliant on you to receive her <coughs> addiction to feel good. You know, she's and she's little like you. She can eat as much as she wants. Yeah, and without still the hormonal. With you. Yeah, that's like you. the hormones. You know, I. You're right. Hormonally, she needs more food than you do. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't understand. And she eats all the time. Because she's always hungry. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you're lean. Yes. Big pain in the so, butt. Uh, 
uh, I was going to say Wayne Dyer just put out a new book I saw. Wishful, wishful thinking or wishful uh, intentions or wishful it, something. It's like gaining your wish. Yeah. I, I just saw it too. Yeah. And that's out on the audio version too. Yeah. Um, but Audible has like almost all of his books. Mm-hmm. So I, I downloaded actually a few of them. I had like six credits on Audible, Kay. so I downloaded a few of his books. Yeah, Wayne Dyer, lecture. Eckhart Tolle, Don Miguel Rubies. Mm, I don't know that name. Okay, there's a book out here. I'll show it to you. Don Miguel. It's the same message. We're like all saying message. the same thing, which is you need to let go of all of that referencing because the referencing is not real. It's fake, and you'll always be vulnerable to some, someone's addiction. Someone out there is addicted to needing you to make them feel better and they're going to judge you based on what makes them feel better about themselves. Even even in line with like, you know, I see a personal therapist. Even in line with like, uh, my husband and I have been, you know, having little tiffs lately about things and I've been getting more worked up about them because he's been triggering things that happened with my father in the past. So you're reacting as if it's your dad but it's not your dad and he is no way Exactly. The same but you're and aware then, of it. Well now after I talked to her about it and then she said you have to weigh how much am I mad at him because of what's happened in the past and how much am I mad at him because of what he did and it's basically like 70% the past and 30% him. So seventy mm-hmm. percent of that anger I have to take away because it's not mm-hmm. he's not doing it. No, it's based on your and that's reaction. About the past, and I have to think about what's happening now. Just that thirty percent. That's just brilliant. I love your therapist already. <laughs> so it kind of ties that in too, you know. Mm-hmm. Did you ever have you ever talked to your dad? We talked about that last time. We like, did. Being able to go, you did talk. To no, him. gosh, no. I'm sorry, I didn't. Don't apologize. Do you. not apologize to me because I'm just here to help you kind of make decisions or even I'm not helping you make a decision. I'm helping you see things. Yeah, and then I know it's your process. You. Exactly. I don't have an expectation. But they you. are coming to my house on the 24th of March. And my plan is to, at the very end of the visit, because it'll be way too uncomfortable if I do it at the beginning, to pull them aside and do it. Will That's you, my plan. I think it's a wonderful plan. If I have the courage. <laughs> well, and in um, the courage, meaning you know you're going to have some fear. I just got to fall off the cliff. That's what it is. It's going. Maybe what, that could be my. Uh, yeah. Well, you what you're going. My bottom or whatever you know. The death of your yeah. Well, because actually this goes totally against your character. Wouldn't you agree? So oh this yeah. Is, okay. So this is breaking a lot of those mm-hmm. perceptions. Even though your body physically and you feel physically and you're emotionally fearing his reaction, you're giving mm-hmm. him a second chance. Mm-hmm. It's like a do-over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't it kind of exciting? And I like don't want to forgive him. There's a lot of me that doesn't want to forgive him. Because? Because th- that would be like letting go of the anger against him, which I like to hold on to that. Well, yeah, because you that's like you know what to expect. Yes. You know how to control that. Mm -hmm. That is something that's killing you. Mm -hmm. That's like the addiction. It's like you're addicted to that anger because it's defined you. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's not like, it's not like overpowering anger. It's just that little bit of anger that is always there. That's like he's your your persecutor and you're the victim. And if he's not your persecutor, then you can't be a victim. And then all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. What happens to what you're doing? It doesn't make sense. It's all a lie and it's a false front. Mm-hmm. My f- my f- one of my friends had like the exact same situation. We were in treatment together and we were in the family counseling sessions together. And her dad was like the exact same way as my dad. And her dad just died. And so now she's going through the guilt of not having, you know, made amends with her father. Yeah, so I can kind of see my future without having made amends. Yeah, well, and and again, you know, you really need to don't do it out of fear. Don't do it because you're fearing regret, because then it's not authentic. It's not coming from a place that is wanting peace. No, it's reactive. 
I really have to prepare for it though. Oh, it can't I agree. Be fake. No, you need to know what it's you want to say. It's not about just doing it. It's about coming from a place that's, that's really real. That's what I meant. You know, don't do yeah. it because you don't want to feel that way. That's again, that's fear-based and that's not authentic. But if you do it with the intent of how, how can you start over? And I really felt that in our last session. Like at first, I was feeling like, okay, I can do this. You know, forgive him. Da da da. But then I was like, oh, okay, I really feel what I'm what I want to do here. Mm -hmm. You know. Then I started crying. So I don't really want to go back to that place where I feel that until I'm ready. Or or I'll practice in the middle. You need to practice. You need to get yourself. You need. This is the power of visualization. You know, my yeah. dad's a therapist, and he would always have us. God, he was such a funny, he's such a funny person still. I, I love my dad so much. But he would have us do <laughs> all sorts of funny stuff. But anyways, one of it was like I was an athlete and we would visualize ourselves, you know, going over the hurdle. I would visualize myself hitting through a, a block, blah, 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 blah. And um, it works. That's how I healed myself. It was all of the power of visualizing my death, like literally seeing myself in a grave, seeing my mom on her knees, laying on the ground, not capable of moving, feeling her. Here I go again. Every time with you, what up? <laughs> feeling her uh, anguish was unbelievable, undescribable feeling that oh yeah and the funny part about it is I I feared her rejection the most mm -hmm. as it kind of like your father relationship where I when I was really ill I was afraid to go back home partly because and they wanted me to come home because they were you know my parents and they wanted to protect me and keep me safe because I was really psychologically ill and it it was known at that point and I told them no which I know I had to have hurt him so much, but I was so afraid of continually feeling that source of rejection because I knew that was the source of my illness. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so when I actually went through that process of desperation, you know, where this is truly life or death because I will take my, my life, that moment of knowing that if I were to end my life, it would almost literally end hers emotionally. Mm -hmm. That moment was so incredibly healing and humbling. And that's really what you need right now is some humility. Because some of this anger is your pride and safety and security. And by continuing to not... Uh, Forgive, which really comes from self-forgiveness. That's the humility of it all, taking all the armor off and saying, here I am, I'm frail and weak. Mm. How do you love me now? Ooh, that sounds hard. It's, it's... I have so much armor. Exposing. I'm it's exposing. It is the most humbling experience. That is how I changed my states of consciousness within... I, there was no time involved. It was so fast. That moment that I allowed myself to feel that vulnerability in my mind. I didn't even need to do it until just recently. I just recently found out my mom has breast cancer. Excuse me, oh. brain cancer. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. And I had a moment where I was with her. And I told her my story for the first time. And it's been like... 15 years since I had my emotional death. She'd never heard about it until this fall. <laughs> I'm so And I bet she was, I bet she just wanted to hug you about it. She did. She cried and I looked at her and I said, Mom, I know how much you love me. And um, she did. We both cried and I actually held her. And that was the, one of the most amazing moments I've ever actually had with her because I let her know how much I actually knew she loved me. You know, <laughs> I think that every every parent in the world needs to actually hear that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping 
that you can take your armor off to at least give that gift to your father. Mm -hmm. It's not and about. I bet you wish now you would have done it a long time ago, huh? Oh my God, when I was ill. Because mm -hmm. she held a lot of guilt for me being sad and me being so emo um, psychologically ill. It was. It been with her for a long time. She felt like it was, it was her fault. fault. Mm-hmm. How can you not as a parent? Mm-hmm. And she, to this day, calls and is apologizes. She's like, I wish I could go back and do things differently. I was not very nice. Did you ever tell her it was her fault? When you never. Oh, my God. It never, ever, ever, ever. See, I even told my dad it was his fault. That's part of your armor. If you, if you back, back down. A long if, time ago. Well, a long time ago, you created that persona. And if you back out of that, what happens? Does he get, is he on top of you again? Is he like above you again? Is that what you're afraid of? That your positioning, your defense, and all that armor is your way of saying you can't do it ever again? I don't know. It's punishing him. He, totally. It's like your way, that's the, um, you're now above him on the pecking order yes. in your mind. Yes. And yes, if yes, you yes, forgive yes, him, yes. your fear is that it's going to flip flop. This is yes. a sign that you haven't, this is an extremist I'm way of feeling. You think, yeah, you're on this side of the pendulum swing, and you think that if you let go a little, that it's going to go all the way back mm -hmm. to the other side. So you're not even giving him credit for being evolved as a person and learning. And he is So if you let go a little, I think you'll find that it's gonna, the swing is going to stop in the center, because that's probably where he's yeah. at now, but you're not. It's like I want to, if I let go, I still want to be on the top. But I could let go of that, right? You need to let go of that, and I bet you'll find that you're actually very, very equal. Equal. And equal is where peace is. Peace. That's what. Peace. Well, that's what Wayne Dyer is talking about. We don't. I'm not. A, he's. He's not above us. He's not below us. We're all. We are all below. on the same path. Part of each other. Correct. Part of all one. And as soon as you feel like it's your. It's your entitlement to be above someone else. You are sucking the life force out of alone. all of us. You are isolating yourself from the yeah. world. All right, I'm so sorry. I totally had a moment, but I feel like no, no, part no. of your recovery process of who you are, mm -hmm. this isn't about letting go of addiction. This is about recovering yourself. Yes. Because all of your addictions and all of the insecurity and all of this control that you have over food and your kids or whatever it is yeah. will go away as a byproduct of developing self-worth. So why even focus on... I mean, you're here for HCG protocol. <laughs> it doesn't even matter if you can't un if you can't get to this source of mm -hmm. yourself because you'll always go to food. And if you don't go to food, you'll do the opposite, which is exercise. I That's the other I'll side. Ever get there. Well, you know. So let's finish this video, Angela. Uh, how are you doing on the very low calorie protocol? I am doing magnificently what was the change Beca I but because hold on a second you started I on was the doing very badly at first binging you started off with the binging immediately and you don't necessarily binge on food but it was like hoarding and hiding cookies right Oreos mm, chocolate covered donuts okay that's right chocolate covered donuts and pizza and pizza from Quick Trip. Okay, <laughs> isn't that funny? You know when I would binge, it would be gas station pastries. Okay. <laughs> and ch uh, sugar cereal, a peanut butter cereal, which makes sense to me because I starved as a child, which is a whole nother situation, and I always craved. Sure, everybody else had that. But anyway, so okay, so let's talk about like how is it going? Like what happened that made you go? Well, when I left here the last time, I had some chocolate covered donuts with me. So I had maybe like four more after I left, and then I decided to throw the bag away. And then... How'd that feel? Like I was... Done. Like I was pretty well done. And But, you know, for the, for the few days before, you know, I felt like I was starving. Like I was... But you said, you know, if you need another orange, eat another orange. You know, mm -hmm. don't let yourself starve. So that was encouraging. 
Um, no, because it's, it's so gray. It's not black and white. Because I was looking at it as black and white. Like, once I've eaten my food, I'm done. You know, and then I just... You know, so it always made me scared to eat too much at the beginning, and then I wouldn't have anything for the end, so then I'd kind of starve earlier in the day. Yep, and have, okay, so how has it been? So, and then I had a couple days after we met where my hunger level went down. So I had some days where I felt, it, it felt easier. Yeah. And so once I got a couple days under my belt that were good, then, you know, it gave me momentum and confidence and getting a little farther and farther away from the sugar, it gets a little easier. And just like breaking a bad uh, mm-hmm. addiction. <laughs> physical. There's physical symptoms. And now I have two weeks under my belt of no sugar. So now it's more of like, I st- don't get me wrong, give me a chocolate covered donut and I'd be happy as can be. Have you ever thought to have some around so that you can make the choice emotionally that you don't want it anymore? Well see, I'm a very uh, agreeable person. I never really disagree, but I would disagree with that. Okay, Just well you have to be ready for it. Because, you know like with alcoholics? You mean, you mean people with low self-worth? Yes. Okay. They tell you never to have alcohol in the house. You want to know why? Why? Because they don't think that you can develop the self-worth that it takes to let go of an addiction. Okay. That You're dealing with alcoholics who are helping alcoholics and that's a sign <laughs> of their own insecurity. That could be. It is the truth. I totally conflict with that notion. The goal is that nothing has that much power over you emotionally. Nothing should ever. But that requires... You really fall off the cliff. It's hard to do. Yeah. So I don't think for me, because if I have a little bit of a That's how stressful fine. day or... A th- That's okay. You're not ready yet. Really hung- I'm not ready. Yep. Yeah. That would be a... That would be something in the future that okay. would be a goal. Okay. Does that make sense? I can, I can do that. Yeah. I mean, it's all based on how you're perceiving your... You know, we got to get you to the point where you're like, bring on the donuts. They don't have... Yeah. I'm ready to test that. Right now it's good for me that I'd have okay. to get myself in the car, my two kids in the car, <laughs> drive to town. Okay, good. You know, yeah. you, know? you know where you're at. I don't. So, okay. you know, I'm kind of on the outside just hearing you and making these suggestions. But on this path, yeah. only Someday you know where you're at. So, exactly. And it could be sooner than later. Let's just find out. But here's the, here's the foundation first mm-hmm. that has to be established. Are you becoming more aware of when you actually have physical hunger? That is the best part of all of this, is I know when I'm hungry, I know when I'm not hungry. How, how about when you're eating when you are hungry and then hunger diminishes? Have you been able to stop yourself as soon as hunger is gone? Because that yeah, to me is the hardest well. part. Yeah, pretty well. Um, I'd like to work on maybe slowing down a little bit, especially on proteins. So okay. then I, because I think they take a little while to catch up. They really do, because you know, they don't digest as quickly. Because then, you know, I wouldn't get to like a 6 or 6.5 or something like that accidentally. Yeah. Oh, see, so you're kicking butt, Angela. Yeah. So this is the foundation. The only thing I tend to overeat just a teeny tad bit would be maybe oranges. Because I've seen, I really like oranges. And it's like, oh, there's two sections left, and I really love them. So that might take me to a 6 or a 6.5. Well, and this is if... So I can work on that, too. Yeah, exactly. And here's the way I want you to think about it is you can always go back to it when you're hungry again. It makes you kind of get excited when you get hungry again. Sometimes I put them in a plastic bag and put them in the fridge. Perfect. You're doing very well. And I always take things now on the road... You know, I think it was almost an excuse before that I didn't take snacks on the road that I'm super hungry, so I have to eat out. You and know? it's exciting because then you feel better about binging. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally, totally diet mentality. I bet mm-hmm. you anything, there's a lot of people out here who know exactly what you just said. I can't wait to be too hungry because now I can gorge and not feel bad. It's like. Absolutely. That's what the thyroid does when it sits low, it's dealing with lots of leptin. To deal with the high shoots up when you overly eat, so you end up with a very low thyroid. Anyway, physiology works 
incredibly like that. And You're compensating. Yes. So, okay, so the goal at this point, to be very clear, is for you to just continue what you're doing and develop confidence. Each day, each week, you're going to develop more and more confidence to where you're detaching from the food emotionally. So you have just begun, and this is perfect. Yay. Yeah. I still fantasize about donuts, though. And when we go to the grocery store, I'm like, oh, those, oh, what are they called? Mandolins. Oh, I saw those (laughs) last night, and I about... I, I just looked at them like I wanted to hug them. Yeah, and my was suggestion... Was that wrong? How, no. How are you supposed to... You just h- slow down the way you're thinking so you can observe it and have compassion for that, like, ooh, there's you're ba- you're, you have a physical reaction to that food. Yeah. Similar to mm-hmm. getting, you know, the alcohol in your system, the cocaine center of the brain gets active. Yeah. And some like of I that is like... Drinks. <laughs> exactly. And, um... This is similar to Pavlov's dog's response. You have a re- memory, a record of what it's like to be I able to eat that. I know what it tastes like. Correct. And when you see it, you kind of go, ooh, delight. <laughs> you know, so... On memories. Correct. More like that the, then. And it's coming physically. It's mm-hmm. not just... It's in the brain. And the body reacts to it. But the really neat part about it is eventually when we you do have that confidence is you will intentionally go to the bakery and just being there will make you go feel like you're having the experience. You don't actually have to binge or eat it to get the experience anymore because you're creating it just from the thought. Ah, the thought would be good enough. Yeah, but that requires that type of confidence that you're not, that donut doesn't control you. Hmm. Because you're and I walked away and I didn't buy the mandolins. I was very proud okay, of myself. Okay, so you are doing what I suggested with having the donuts around you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on I can your leave own them in the store. I can start there. In the store. I love that. Start there, because that's you know you're in you're like I was really proud. What happens when you do that over and over and over again? Eventually, you're like, eh. Yeah, when I go grocery shopping alone, though, I try to avoid that aisle with the chocolate. So let's donuts. go one aisle closer. One aisle closer. <laughs> one aisle closer. Just start one aisle at a time. Okay. Or I go like this. <laughs> but you do you understand the value of doing that for you? Mm-hmm. I agree. That's the point. So eventually, it's like taking the alcoholic and going, go go sit with a friend who's drinking. Yeah. Just sit with a friend who's drinking. Can you do that without feeling like your life is hell? Yeah. You know? (laughs) And at this point, how do you feel about sitting with a friend who has a cocktail? Oh, fine. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And at one point, you didn't have that confidence. No. So you had to avoid everybody who drank. Mm Mm-hmm. You are Absolutely. so you've done this before. You need to see this from this oh, is the same true. exact process of thought. True. And you need to approach it with the same view. And the really neat thing about food is that and the hard thing is that you you have to learn to live with it and learn to use it. Mm-hmm. So this would be like saying, Hey, you're not an alcoholic. You have just really bad self worth and you have dependency issues and you have daddy issues and you have issues with you just need to you're dependent. We've got to get you independent. So the goal would be that you could go to a bar and have a beer and not think that there's something wrong or something you're gaining. That it's a lateral move. It's the middle ground. This is the thing with your dad. It's like he's not above or below you. You need to find the center where you're equal. Alcohol isn't above or below you. It's an inanimate object. That you should be able to have a beer and it's not going to create the severe fear of failure and loss and desperation and you screwed up so you need to just go get wasted or ooh I'm gaining I'm getting I'm like I'm liberated I'm like yeah winning. you're not getting that either I would both of those well that's because you've never really dealt with the actual problem yet <coughs> you've detached from it like divorce you, now, the food issue, to me, this is where dealing with food addiction is so profound because you have to find middle with it. And if you find that middle with food, I guarantee the byproduct is you're not an addict hmm. with like anything <laughs> because you're so grounded from within. It's not grounded from external sources. Yeah, it's hard because with alcohol, you can do all or nothing. But with food, you have to... Whatever, you're doing all or that. nothing right now. Am I? Yes. Okay. That's what binge eating disorder is. <laughs> That's what diet disorder is. 
That's what anorexia is. That's that is a form of addiction. Oh, I did want to mention <coughs> at the gym they do your body composition. Yeah. I did lose three pounds of lean mass. That's typical. Lean muscle. Is that okay? They said you should never lose any lean muscle. So. Well, you're not losing lean muscle. I know that for sure. But well, fluid said, waste and. They said I did. They don't know what they're talking about. Because I lost a lot of body fat, but I. Because they say they have how much body fat do you have, how much muscle do you have, and from you from know, electroimpedance, from uh, squeeze. Okay, fat. they do, they don't know squeeze your water, food retention, waste. They don't know anything. What the hell? So I don't know. You're better off coming to me for that. I'm an expert. I've okay. done thousands. See this thing? This is a caliper test. Yeah. I've done thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And they I know, right? Haven't. Oh no! If they're at a gym, <coughs> they don't know what they're doing. Okay. Okay. <sighs> You're doing so well. I'm so proud of you. The one thing I'm not good at, what your book recommends, is <coughs> not looking at the scale. Well, that's just a sign of your control. I have been looking at the scale. Well, but I have been doing really well. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> There's a step-by-step -step process with this, and you need to work if you're headed in the right direction. That's where we're going. So right now the view is developing sense of hunger and trusting that and focusing on that. Yeah, the next step is that. when you really feel confident with that, it's time to let go of the scale. Maybe not every day. Maybe you start doing one, of, you know, weighing one every three days because you don't necessarily need that mm -hmm. eventually either. You shouldn't need I that. I should to start phasing it out at some point. Yeah. Yeah. With the intention that it doesn't define, it's not your motivation mm -hmm. to listen to hunger. It's fun and exciting though. I'm losing like a pound to pound and a half every day. That's on the scale. That's not all fat. Just FYI. Okay. And some what days it mean? is, it means there's fluid retention all over the place. Okay. Your water, and it changes with this cycle, this snow that just came in, you're holding fluid now. Oh. I know. So it's like, okay, the moon cycles, you know, right now we're having major shift in, you know, because now we're heading into a new season. That's going to change your cycles. That's going to change. Ovulation is going to affect everything. Mm -hmm. So the scale is going to be going up and then down. Your fat loss, if you follow the protocol as I've described. Your fat loss is going to be going down pretty linearly, okay? Slow, slows down a little bit as your weight loss goes up, you know, because you're not carrying around as much weight against gravity, so it's a slight decline. However, your water retention does this. So there'll be days where you lose more, and then there's days you don't lose as much, then there may be a day you <coughs> gain. And so if you're using the scale as motivation, you're setting yourself up for cheating. However, if you don't take the scale serious, if it doesn't define your idea of if this is working or not, then you probably won't cheat. Well, the thing is, though, is it's been nice because if I do not follow it exactly, the protocol, I don't see the pound lost. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, because there were two days, actually, that... Well, I read online, I saw like HCG protocol, like the modern version. Oh my God, you need to get off the internet. There is no good source of information on the internet. Sorry, everybody, but it's all crap. Seriously, <laughs> no one really knows what they're talking about, and it's all diet focused, so it's how much do you lose? Yeah, but anyways, exactly. keep on going. You went to the modern version, which I know of. And they said, laugh. which my mind loved. I know, because you're an addict. Everybody yeah. who's addicted loves more food, by yeah, the way. Yes, exactly. Sugar-free, fat-free chocolate pudding. Oh, my God. Honey, And you paid for me. I know. So much better. <laughs> and then I just happened to be at my sister-in-law's and brother's house, and they were serving sugar-free, fat-free chocolate pudding. So I thought a serving of that... We'll I'm fine. so glad that you're watching yourself <laughs> from the outside, right? <laughs> so tell me, keep on going, because I already know so what's going on. So then I didn't lose a pound that day. Oh my God, I wonder why, because it's about calories, or exactly. it's about hormones. And it has milk in it, and... <clears throat> Just don't go to the anyway, internet. Honestly, so that didn't work. Run by addicts. So in that situation, the scale helped me to know that it didn't work. So oh. then I couldn't have pudding anymore. 
Well, and the thing but is this, there will come a day where you follow the protocol perfect, and you probably will eat less than 500 calories. You're doing everything I'm telling you perfectly, and it goes up. Okay. Yeah. That's that what you're setting day. yourself up. You see what I mean? So your mood is being, you're highly dependent on the scale now. So you're shifting your addiction to the scale. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I could see that. So you tell me if it's worth ending that addiction because you're defining your value and control from a number on a scale which is well, so Well, I just have to so know from shallow. you. It's it's just good to know from you if I do everything right. It, it may will. not go down. So it's this not ex like Exactly. It's not going to go down. That's just good to know from okay, you. Good. So then I know yeah. that I can't control it. You can't. There is no and you're setting yourself up for cheating and you'll also Why would I cheat I, if I didn't If you don't If I went up well, you, because you think that it's not working, so you've entitled yourself to some reward. That's common. Or the other thing is, ooh, I lost more, so now I can cheat because I've lost. I get to reward no way, myself. No way, Jose. Because I, I don't want to gain it. it back. Yeah, I mean, and ultimately, your body's done nothing wrong. It's your relationship with food <coughs> that's the problem. And, I and wasn't so the measure of success should be the change in the relationship with food, not the change in the body. Mm -hmm. I know, that's what I'm trying to... You need to go back and read Weight Loss Apocalypse. Yeah, because I'm reading so many books right now. That I'm Take like your time, but my hi I really, right now you're in this protocol, you need to go back and read mm -hmm. my book. I do. You'll probably get more out of it the second time too now that you're in it, and you've exposed yourself to a lot of what I discuss in there. Yeah. And a good thing that pudding wasn't about because I, you know, had to have it or wasn't about binging. So, you know. I agree. So that was good. See, I'm I did really want a treat, but, you know, it wasn't about I had to have it. And there was one other time, too, when I cheated, per se, but it was pretty small cheat. I know. That's how we justify addiction. You know, and then again, I <laughs> didn't lose anything. You know, it was craisins and macadamia nuts. Yeah, you're better off focusing on why and how you came to the conclusion of that those are cheats. It doesn't matter. If it's because I was eating dinner too early and then expecting myself not to eat anything after dinner. Okay, that's So now I've moved back dinner to like 7.30. You need to listen to your body. You mm -hmm. need to let go of all that control. Everything you're doing is to control everything. Mm. You're not, you're listening to hunger, but not really. You don't trust it. So you're doing well. Don't, don't, don't make me, because I'm picking this apart and being like, nope, 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 nope. I'm not saying you're not doing well, because I think you are. The way your thinking is changing, you're watching yourself, you're being an observer, you're not being harshly judgmental, um, but you're still grasping on to dictating everything. Well, see, it's kind of like I have to balance this with, like, what the nutritionist is saying at oh, the you gym. Oh, you need to stop and listening put, to her. And I put you and this first. Okay, God, you need to shut them up because they don't know what they're talking about. Because, see, they say, I, I respect that and I will do that, but they say, like, you know, don't have an orange at 9 o'clock at night because then you're burning the sugars from the orange oh. throughout the night. And they're not right, but fats. that right there is so not wrong. Fats. She has no idea what she's talking about. I'm more concerned about eating the orange at night because of your insulin levels and your sleeping patterns. <laughs> yeah. So don't listen to them. Please don't. They have no idea so what they're talking about. Does she work at a gym? Yes. That has a sign right there that she does not know what she's doing. So if I'm starving at not 9 intentionally at night, I can eat an orange? At 10 o'clock at night? 9 o'clock at night. You're better off having a protein. Okay. If you're hungry, have a protein. Take your protein allotment. Which it seems weird to have a protein, but... Well, that's based on your behavior with snacking yeah. and probably eating at night, but flip-flop it. You're better off if you are hungry. You know, it's all weak sleep, uh, sleep-wake cycles and... Yeah. Oh, my God. I honestly can't stand people, like, that really don't know what they're talking about. I just... It's like, eh. As soon as you hear certain things, I just know, don't waste your time, don't talk to them. You are on this hormonal therapy right now, which none of what they tell you is applicable. Okay. 
So you can't use what they're telling you. You're confusing yourself by listening to people who don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how this works. So they're giving you information based on the FDA and the food grade pyramid. Yeah. And so if I do protein, will I still burn fat during the night? Do you know what determines if you burn fat? What? The hormone leptin. You need to go back and read my book. Okay. You've forgotten what was written in there. Okay. Or when you read it, you weren't ready to hear it. You mm -hmm. need to go back and read it. And if you are not hungry, you're utilizing leptin. End of story. If you are not hungry, you are utilizing leptin. You're use and it's in your burning fat. You're burning fat. Hunger is your most important tool. And if you're too hungry, you're you are not burning fat. Okay. I gotta remember that. It's such a it's such a reverse thinking sort of a thing. Yeah, because it that's totally what it all goes is. against the crap that's out there, which is mm -hmm. calories in, calories out, which, mm -hmm. you know, does not work. So why would you continue right. to apply the bullshit that someone who doesn't really know what they're talking about is trying to tell you? Food does not start with nutritional value. It starts with hormonal value. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can't even go into nutrition until you figure out the hormonal balancing act. Hormones are by far the most important balance in the system, not nutrition. True. Nutrition comes next, and mm -hmm. we're nowhere close to that. The diet, the nutritionist, all they think is nutrition. And it's okay if I take a multivitamin, right? Yeah, I mean, take an na all-natural one. Sure. I just take a regular one. I'm going to go ahead and stop this, but oh my God, you got me on a soapbox.